very good morning to all of you friends today we are going to study about the different types of connective tissues okay now under animal tissue we know the first type of tissues were epithelial tissues now today we are going to study about the second type of tissue that is connective tissues okay in connective tissues there are different types of connective tissues they are blood bone cartilage ligament and tendons areolar tissue and adipose tissue okay now under connective tissue all these connective tissues they have two important parts the first one that means all connective tissues they consist of a matrix that is the ground substance or matrix in which the cells are suspended so all the connective tissues they have a similarity or a basic characteristic that they are made up of matrix that means a ground substance on which the cells are suspended or embedded okay let us see how so the first one we have i have given you notes also about blood bone and cartilage so in bones if you have gone through the summary you will see that bone is also made up of a fluid matrix that is called plasma and cells which are rbc wbc and platelets okay so the blood tissue is also called a fluid connective tissue blood is called a fluid connective tissue because it is made up of a matrix or fluid matrix that is called plasma in which cells like rbc wbc and platelets are suspended okay also blood connects different parts of our body that is why blood is called a fluid connective tissue this is a very important question now what is blood actually made up of blood is made up of some cells and these cells are embedded in a fluid matrix that is called plasma we have seen that these cells are of different types okay these cells once again if i write the cells of blood are the first one rbc the second type wbc and the third type of cells are the platelets okay so the rbc cells these do not have nucleus in them okay mature rbc cells they are discoidal in shape concave structure from both side and they do not have nucleus in other cell organelles because its major function is to carry oxygen because they have hemoglobin pigment in them so hemoglobin pigment that is present in the red blood cells they help in carriage of oxygen okay that is why blood carries oxygen say so we have read about uh, you can say exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the alveoli in junior classes also okay so rbc now wbc they are again of two types so okay, two types of wbc one are the granulocytes and the other types are the agranulocytes okay i have already given these notes if you have gone through the note you will see that the granulocytes they have granules in them that means when the cell is going to phagocytosize or you can say uh, it is going to eat up eat up any foreign substance that it releases those granules okay sometimes these granules also have chemicals like histamine or heparin which act as anti inflammatory substance or anti coagulant so they protect our body gives immunity and these are called granulocytes now these granulocytes are again of three types neutrophil eosinophil and basophil okay so neutrophil eosinophil and basophil so these are the three different types of granulocytes so please remember wbc is of two types granulocytes which are again of three types neutrophils eosinophils and basophils and agranulocytes are of two types that is lymphocyte and monocyte so okay, the lymphocyte and monocyte so these wbc cells that means the white blood cells they do not have hemoglobin but they provide immunity to our body okay they release certain type of chemicals which protect our body from from foreign substances and sometimes they also eat up or phagocytosize other foreign substances like bacteria fungi virus etc okay and platelets are plate like structures how a plate breaks into different platelets so platelets they are nucleated and 
their important function is to help in blood coagulation because they release a chemical that helps in clotting of blood okay so they help in clotting of blood so these are some of the functions of the cells of blood okay that is the first one blood so blood is called a fluid connective tissue because it has a fluid matrix now let us see the next one that is bones now in case of bones bone is a hard connective tissue like blood is a fluid connective tissue so bones and cartilage they are hard connective tissue whereas areolar tissue and adipose tissue they are loose connective tissue let us see how now these bones these bones are made up of cal a matrix that is made up of calcium and phosphorus okay so bones also made up because they are connective tissue they are also made up of matrix that matrix is made up of calcium and phosphorus that mean, that is why bones are so hard and it consists of osteocytes that means the cells bone cells are called osteocytes so these osteocytes are suspended in a hard matrix of calcium and phosphorus that is why bones are so hard okay now these bones are i have drawn diagrams also i have given the summary there you must have seen some rounded structures like this these are called haversian canals okay haversian canals and in between the haversian canal there are some hollow spaces which are called canali culi okay these are written there so canali culi and just outside the canali culi the osteocytes are surrounded in this way so these are the osteocytes okay one osteocyte is like this something like this so this is one osteo site and is having a nucleus so this is a osteocyte now these osteocytes are present in concentric ring like fashion around the canaliculi so canaliculi is the place through which the veins and other capillaries okay they are present in the nerve tissues are also present so bones are very much living in nature because they have connections of bone uh, sorry blood and nerve okay so these are habitation canals and there are some tough connective tissues present around them but please remember bones are although they are very hard and rigid but they are porous in nature okay because of these haversian canals there are some we can say spaces present that makes the bones porous otherwise you can imagine if the bones of a body they are solid then it will become very very heavy okay we cannot carry our own bones the weight of our bones that is why bones are porous and in case of birds also they are highly porous that is why they can fly easily in the air okay so bones are although they are hard but they are not flexible and they are porous in nature but cartilage are again they are rigid in nature okay so cartilage if you see the diagram of cartilage that is made up of cells which are called chondrocytes just like bones are made up of osteocytes so cartilage are made up of chondrocytes okay and the matrix is made up of sugars and proteins so sugar and protein so here little bit different okay they are different from calcium and phosphorus in case of bone in cartilage also they have little bit of calcium and phosphorus but they have more amount of sugar and proteins in them in which this is the matrix in which cells called chondrocytes are suspended so cartilage they are rigid okay they are not porous like bones so that is a major difference between bones and cartilage okay now let us see the next one that is ligaments and tendons so we completed blood then bones and cartilage now let us see the next type of connective tissue that is ligament and tendons okay now ligaments and tendons these are also connective tissue they are very you can say a very uh, some type of tissues which are very hard and very tough okay and these ligaments and tendons they are present in between the bones like ligaments are present in between bones so it joins a bone to another bone whereas tendons they join a muscle to a bone okay or any other connective tissue to a bone so tendons and ligaments so what are ligaments ligaments are some tough type of flexible connective tissue which joins a bone to a bone Whereas tendons are such type of connective tissues, very tough fibrous connective tissues.
it joins other type of connective tissues or muscles to a bone. So please remember bone to bone, ligament, bone to muscles, that is tendons. Okay. So this is the difference between ligaments and tendons. Now let us see the next one that is areolar tissue and adipose tissue. Okay, these are these two are called loose connective tissue. Because if you see the diagram of areolar tissue, you will see areolar tissue is made up of some cells and it is present just beneath our skin. So areolar tissue, it is actually binding type of tissue. It binds the skin to the organs or it is present in the lilings of the nerve tissues or the blood vessels, etc. Okay, so this areolar tissue, it is actually made up of some fiber-like structures, okay, and some fibroblast, like this, some fibroblast cells are there from which collagen fibers are present and some cells are suspended. Okay, so areolar tissue is made up of fibroblast cells. These fibroblast cells, they produce some fiber-like structures, okay. They give rise to three types of fiber-like structures. These are called the elastin fibers, okay, elastin fibers and some are called reticular fibers, okay, and some are called collagen fibers also, okay. So, three types of fibers. So, it, it gives rise to three types of fibers, elastin fibers, collagen fibers and reticular fibers. These fibers, they act as binding substance and they bind the different organs of our body so that everything is in place, okay. And some fat cells are also there, some plasma cells are there, some mast cells are there and some macrophages like WBC cells. Macrophages means if any foreign particle is present, then they will engulf it. So, they are called macrophages. So, certain cells are suspended in the ground matrix okay so it is a loose type of connective tissues and like these are the plasma cells some are there which are called macrophages okay so different cells are there if you see the diagram you can understand it is given in the note but let us see how is it different from adipose tissue now adipose tissue is similar to areolar tissue but adipose means fat it consists of fat cells okay so some fat cells are present Okay, fat globules are present like this and these are the fat globules and these are cells and suppose this is the nucleus. Okay, in this way they are made up of fat cells. So, these are the oil droplets which are actually present in the cells and some elastin fibers are also present like this. Okay, some cartilagin is uh, sorry, some connective tissues are present like this. So, these are some connective tissues which are present in between the fat cells. Okay. So, in this way, the difference between areolar tissue and adipose tissue is that areolar tissue consists of different types of collagen fibers, elastin fibers as well as fibroblast cells and the number of fat cells are very less in case of areolar tissue and it is present just below the skin under the organs etc but adipose tissue's function is it act as a fat reservoir and it prevent the body heat from skipping because you know fat cells they give they act as a energy reservoir and they also insulate our body okay so let us once again see the different functions of this connective tissue in case of bones you know bones connect different part of the tissue because it helps in transportation of substances like food, nutrients, hormones, vitamins, even unwanted substances, that means waste substances like urea and carbon dioxide. There is a function of blood. Bones function, it gives rigidity and basic framework to our body, supports and protects all the internal organs. Okay. Cartilage, these are present in the tip of our nose and the tip of our ear in the trachea region, okay, because they give, uh, like, protect our body from collapsing, okay, and they also give some support to the the internal skeleton that is a bony skeleton of our body. These cartilage they are also present at the ends of the long bones and act as cushion. Ligaments and tendons these are connective tissue which joins a bone to a bone and a muscle to a bone. Areolar tissue and adipose tissue these are present just below the skin. One helps in binding repair repair of uh, damaged or injured tissues. The other act as 
energy reservoir and insulate our body okay so these are the different types of connective tissues please go through the summary and learn the these topics try to compare the difference okay differences between these different types of connective tissues thank you so much for watching this video